on my journey to make, uh, to become an established artist, um, I want to know, you know, what, how, how the great ones became established. It's not through their name, or sometimes it probably was, but it's their great pieces of artwork, you know? I remember when I was a kid um, looking at Leonardo da Vinci's, and there's something that just drew me to his artwork. Michelangelo, and the, these are the these are the names that stuck around for generations and for thousands of years. So what makes a great piece of art great? That's what I want to find out today. On my journey to become an established artist, I want to know what makes great pieces of art great. Now, every great um, journey starts, of course, with a Google search. So, is it their names alone? They put a lot of effort and time into their art. And they learned a lot of techniques. Is that what did it? Is it technical? There's all kinds of... I guess ideas about what makes great art great. And I think you can almost apply all of those techniques into almost any great any any painting. But what makes it stand out? So this is a painting called Luncheon of the Boating Party by Pierre-Auguste Renoir. What makes this a great piece of art? Renoir is obviously a great artist. And you can, you can argue that it's maybe it's technical. And, well, where's the composition? The eye, like this roll, this rail over here, points to this woman. She's the only one who's kind of looking in this direction. Everyone else is kind of looking everywhere else. And everyone is kind of painted in this direction here. Even this line over here points to the woman. The man over here is kind of looking somewhere else, but his hat comes this way. So this woman now looks back this way at this man so there's a story here between the gaze between him and her and it's a moment you know in history in time that's being captured here a story is being told you can almost hear the loudness of the cafe but these two as far as they're concerned, these people don't even exist. So this is a great piece. The colors. What about the colors? Um, the use of these vibrant, beautiful colors. They kind of just jump out at you. And they, they speak of Renoir. And Renoir was famous for being a voyeur. A voyeur of the ballerinas and and obviously here we are and as the artist himself he is witnessing this moment between them so actually this moment is captured by three people even though this is very crowded between the viewer us and these two which is amazing that's that's an amazing piece this is this is a great piece because of this human uh, experience that we can all relate to. So, is that what makes great pieces of art? Not only is it technical with the color, but this human experience that we're sharing. And if you stare at it long enough, you I didn't see this guy right up until the last second. So, and it was all intentional. 
This is Shekov by Losev uh, Braz, 1898. Well, what makes this a great piece? It is obviously a good piece. This is a good piece of art. But, you know, it's a portrait. And we could, I, I'll, I don't know who this guy is. And to be honest with you, I don't even know who the artist is. But I would say that he's captured something. The artist captured something. His hand, the way it's so tense this way. And I don't know, this is a very intense person. The way he stares and everything. What about the use of color? Obviously, the light comes from just to the the sitter's right over here. And I'll bet you anything, his um, well, that would be his his right eye is not quite into the center. Hmm. It's interesting. It's his gaze. The gaze of this sitter. It's like he's looking right at the artist with great intensity. But is it a great piece or is it a good piece? I don't know. Here is probably the greatest painting of all times. It's, of course, the Mona Lisa by Michelangelo. But what makes that a great painting? Technically, Leonardo is perfect. Um, the color scheme. I, I don't know if it's as vibrant today as it was back when he painted it, but from what I know of Renaissance art, the colors were amazing. He's a genius. The photorealism is, is great. The composition, she's sitting right here in the middle, and there's a lot of thought behind exactly how he placed her. The smile is what's the most famous of all about this painting. And recently, I, I saw a documentary where it was actually difficult to make um, her smile. And her gaze looking directly at the artist and smiling. To me, that is... That's what makes this a really great painting. That Leonardo worked hard to make her smile. And he captured it. Right there, this woman who never smiles. He made her smile and he captured that... For a brief second, he worked so hard for that brief second. And it's such a human thing. Like smiling and trying to make each other happy. And there's that mood there. I think maybe that's what makes this a great painting. It's, it's not just the painting itself, but maybe the story behind it. She was so mysterious for so long. Perhaps. Techn technique, color, the story behind it, and the mood. The, the, how we can relate to the Mona Lisa. How we know, how we're trying to contain a smile and maybe not doing such a good job of it. So what do I know of, of great art so far? It's technique. It's the confidence of the artist himself or herself. Um, it's mood, the emotion behind the subject matter. It, it's the fame. It's the legend behind it. It's also, it seems to have something to do with 
a split second in time how we capture something that eludes us that is not going to last forever but we've captured it in a painting or in a piece that's going to last for a very long time maybe maybe that brings to mind our own uh, mortality how nothing lasts we make something permanent or try to make something permanent that is fleeting it's something that i've seen in the french impressionism it's something i've seen in da vinci's mona lisa it's something that i've seen it's as fleeting as fame is in 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 uh, warhol's pop art and the very question of fame itself fame is only what the, what the what the warhol say everyone's famous for at least 5 uh, 15 minutes how does he create how does he make that permanent and he created these iconic images of marilyn monroe and elvis and and himself and bananas <laughs> and campbell's soup and he's made fame permanent So it's to give art, maybe, gives something that we want and we don't want to die. We want to live and that's something that's not going to happen. We are going to perish, but art can last. There's a legacy there. So now I think I have something here. Um, I'm going to apply it to my own painting and see if that stands. If, if what I'm creating, if I can apply what I've learned right now to my own painting. And now, if I can, if I can do what they've done, maybe that will help me be an established artist. This is my most recent painting. I've chosen Egg Tempera. Egg Tempera is the most permanent of all paintings. It lasts longer than oil. It lasts... It lasts forever. And I've chosen to paint a lantern. Now, the, the, the colors here are a little duller. So I could improve on the color. The composition and the technique, I could spend more time in making this more photorealistic. It's not bad, but I could spend even more time in making it better. Um, the lines go and flow this way. So your eye wants to go this way. But does it come back to see the lantern? Which is obviously, this is the centerpiece. It's actually quite in the middle. So what am I saying about What is the human emotion here? What am I capturing here that can't be captured? Now there's rust. There's decay here. This is created by human. This is created by human. This is nature. This is nature that's basically deteriorating. It's slowly deteriorating. This, you can see that the lantern's been used a lot. This lantern is old. It hardly has been cleaned. It's very dirty. So... And also, this looks old. This looks, it can be dated almost, it looks almost Western, but this is actually hanging on my house. We don't build things like this anymore. We don't build with wood anymore. Wood decays. Everything here is decaying. So I've captured something. This won't ever decay. The permanence of the egg tempera. So arguably, I can say that I've captured something here. It's not, of course, it's not the real thing. The Mona Lisa isn't real. It's our attempt to capture um, the fleeting and making it permanent. This decaying lantern is not going to decay on this painting. 
perhaps. But I think I can make this better. Maybe it's not enough. I got to go big or go home. The next painting I'm going to do will show maybe that permanence even more. Or I can fix this to show, and maybe that's what great painting is. It's not just, it, you have an idea and you work at it and you work at it and you work at it. I'm not done with this. This, this will, I will improve on this. So what have I learned so far about what makes great art work on my journey to become an established artist? Well, I still have a lot to learn. A lot. Um, I think I've learned that technique is very important. Mood, like the emotion you get from it, from a, a piece, is very important. But to capture something that is fleeting to capture, to choose, like what I choose to make permanent, probably says more about the artist. That, so I guess these paintings, the Mona Lisa says more about Da Vinci than it does about Mona Lisa. Warhol's pop art says more about Warhol than he does about Marilyn Monroe or Elvis, that he values fame. Uh, Renoir valued love and and to capture that moment so what about me maybe my painting says more about me than I actually want to admit maybe it's something that I'm actually looking into myself here this lantern that is not lit this lantern that's decaying that's no longer needed uh, in, in this world of technology, maybe, maybe I'm longing for some a simpler life. Maybe this is more about my journey going into darkness, not really knowing what I'm getting into, and facing it, not knowing. Maybe this is about death, and facing, and rather than. Um, celebrating life as the other artists did maybe i'm celebrating death maybe i'm looking deeper into this unknown bravely do i have a fascination with death is this what i'm telling myself i don't know but there's more to discover that i'm realizing that's more to do with myself than it is about art at all and i think this is something that i should be embracing this is something that I should be exploring deeper into my soul, into what I chose to make permanent. So I, I th and maybe this is something that you could do in your art is, is what do you, what, what are you making permanent? What are you choosing? So I think this is what makes great art is putting a little bit of yourself into your art kind of blindly doing it bravely going in the dark without your lantern well that's all for right now but thank you for watching how to become an established artist um I'm happy that you're with me on my journey on how to become an established artist and studying art and producing art. Please subscribe and hit that alert button. Um, share and, and uh, hey, buy a print. Help support local artists like me. And I hope you have a great day and, and, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.